Hello, welcome to my home studio. My name is Steven Lurson here in partnership with Donna Downey Studios. This is an example of a wintry Christmas season painting where you have glitter glistening, uh, you have a landscape, uh, night sky, snow is falling, the snow is, is come down through a foggy evening and you have a reindeer looking at you as if you've walked through the woods and the North Pole or something, and then you happen upon one of Santa's reindeer. I don't know. Um, but I like this. I think it's a very fun painting that almost anyone can do. And uh, let me go ahead and walk you through the step-by-step -step from a white 11 by 14 canvas all the way to this end product. So thank you very much. And with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. So we're getting started. The first thing we need is a canvas or possibly a journal. Basically, this one is 11 inches wide by 14 inches tall, so 11 by 14. And I have a number of silhouettes I just found online and printed out and cut out. So I could use something like that, something like a tree, something like a snowman. Could even do the same thing potentially with words or an ornament, uh, but step one, what I did is I'm choosing this one. I have a pencil. What would be even better than a pencil is an aquarellable or water-soluble um, pencil, uh, color pencil, basically anything that is water-soluble so that when you go on to painting, the lines dissolve away. But once I figure out where I want it, and I want this one to be right here, kind of in the middle, in the lower section, and I'm just gonna trace around it And as soon as I'm finished, then we'll be back. All right, so I just finished tracing around the whole thing with a regular pencil, and we have the silhouette. Once we have the silhouette, I'm gonna use Golden Brand Titan Buff Fluid Acrylic Paint. It's kind of an off-white color. Uh, so I have that in my palette. I'm also using a tiny brush. You can use a liner brush. You can use just basically any small tipped brush and I'm going to paint inside the shape. Huh, might need a little bigger brush. It's gonna take a little while. Okay, so I'll use a bigger brush for the body, kind of a half inch rounded tip flat brush. There we go, that's a lot faster. Just gonna paint in the majority of the body with Titan Buff. All right, now that the majority of the body is painted in, now I'll go back to the small brush for the horns, or the antlers, excuse me. Right-handed, so I work from the left to the right, that way I don't lay my hand in any wet paint. Feel free to paint over the pencil lines. It's not necessary that they are maintained. If you go over the line, great. If you don't, great. Doesn't make a big difference either way. All right, now I'm going to go for an ombre effect. So I'm getting, I'm going to break out some burnt umber light, golden brand fluid acrylic. I'm going to put it right next to the Titan Buff. I'm working somewhat quickly because I want my paint to stay wet. As long as you're blending wet paint into wet paint, it will blend. Otherwise, you're just going to paint over it and it will not blend. I'm going to try to get an ombre effect darker up top and lighter at the bottom. And since my Titan Buff is still wet, and I haven't taken a long time and it hasn't dried up on me. This is working. I'm always starting with dark paint at the top and pulling down. I'm never starting with dark paint right down in here. I want this to blend very nicely into the Titan Buff. As a matter of fact, I may get some brown and then get more Titan Buff just to produce that medium color and mix it right on the deer. Just going back and forth between the Titan Buff 
and the burnt umber light to get a nice ombre fade from one color into the other without having any stripes or I want it to be nice and seamless between what is brown or darker and what is lighter. Okay, that part is finished and I'm gonna give it a few minutes to dry. All right, so I just dried the majority of the deer. I want this to be somewhat of a night scene, so I'm going into Golden Brand Anthroquinone Blue. It's a nice, deep, rich uh, primary blue. I'm gonna put some of that in the palette. Use a half inch rounded tip flat brush and paint this up in the sky. Now it's so rich, the paint is so vibrant, you really have to water it down or mix white into it for it to show, for the color to show. So I'm just spread it out. If I paint it solid, it may come across as just black. And I want it to definitely look blue. So I'm basically just painting this really quickly in the top third of the canvas. And I'll also wrap the paint around the edges so that whenever it's finished, I won't have to frame it for it to look finished. So I'm going to walk around here, around at the top. Lift this up, paint that. You see how that breaks, how that part of the paint breaks? That's called the dry brush technique. Just touch the tip of the brush into some water, liquefy that paint, help it to flow. Dry brush technique is great when you're trying to achieve physical texture and exaggerate physical texture when you only want to paint the peaks. But in the case that you're wanting coverage, that's not really the best. You want a nice, even flow of paint. And if not even, at least you want to cover the white of the canvas. All right, so there we are. We painted the top of the canvas. Let me figure out where this is in the center. And because I have a vision of where this is going, I'm not even going to care that that is a hard line. I'll fix that later. So the next thing that I'm going to do is uh, dry this, and then I'm going to sprinkle down some, excuse me, I'm going to dry this, then paint some matte medium or, col or collage podge or mod podge or any type of acrylic glue or gel. I'm going to paint that down, sprinkle glitter around it, and then repaint over everything, and then it'll be finished. Now, we're ready to move on. The sky is blue and dark and dry. I'm going to take my half inch rounded tip flat brush, some Mod Podge, crack that open, paint this around somewhat, um, I, won't necessarily, I won't necessarily say arbitrarily, but I'm not really caring really where it's going basically painting it around the background. This is the glue, and I have to work quickly, this is the glue that the glitter that I'm going to pour over it is going to stick to. Let's overlap the deer just a little bit, maybe on the feet. That's good enough. I need to work quickly. Oh, I didn't grab my glitter. Be right back. So I have my glitter, it's kind of an accumulation of lots of glitter from around. Basically when I have extra, I dump it into this jar. So it's not necessarily one type or brand. It's a good way to be efficient. Oh, apparently there are sequins in there as well. So I'm pouring this on. I'm going to shake it around. I'm going to do this outside, otherwise I'll get glitter all over uh, the place. So I will be right back after I've kind of shaken it outside, and we'll move on. All right, glitter's dry. Now I'm going to put some more Titan Buff in the palette. 
I'm also going to grab some titanium white, put that in the palette. If you're seeing other colors in the palette, that's all dry paint. So it does not interact with wet paint once it's dry. It's basically just plastic. All right, so I'm going to start on the bottom and just white paint, and I'm painting over this. So what this is doing is the white paint is hiding the majority of the glitter. So what that does is it creates physical texture that otherwise would not be there because the glitter is underneath. It makes it more like a sandpapery surface. However, I can't cover all the glitter, nor do I want to cover all the glitter. Some of it will show through, and some of it will retain its sparkly quality. And I'm wanting it to. This acrylic paint is also going to help seal it in. So I did start with just white, uh, titanium white for the bottom. And then as I work my way up the canvas, I'm going to fade it. I'm going to start fading in the Titan buff. Just kind of moving this around. However, whenever I, I, I'm seeing this now, when I'm using the Titan buff, it's, uh, it's kind of decreasing the contrast between where the deer is and the background. So I'm going to stop using Titan buff except to fade out, to fade into the blue. I'm going to basically paint over all this with white. Titan buff is only going to be my, my fading color. So to get a good fade, I'm cleaning my brush in the water. I'm going to try to get the majority of the water out. And now I'm pointing my brush at the Titan buff. And I'm just going to kind of keep removing it and buffing it away from above. I'm not doing this because that's technically I'm pointing to the blue and then I'd be painting the Titan buff with the side of the brush. I'm wanting to paint into the Titan buff with the front, with the tip of the brush. There we go. So now the fade from Titan buff to blue is softer. I'm re gonna reload with some more white paint into my palette. And I'm okay with painting over the reindeer's feet. If it's walking in snow, then whenever it walks, it's gonna sink into the snow, no big deal. I'm even okay with putting some on the reindeer's back. If it's snowing, then it would accumulate on the reindeer's back. Painting white over the 99% of the glitter. I'm wanting a sandpapery texture, not necessarily, and with a hint of gold sticking, poking through. I'm not wanting the gold to be the focal point. I'm wanting the gold to be an accessory. Painting over the pencil line that was originally drawn. I don't want that pencil line to last. And by painting over the edge, it creates somewhat of an atmospheric, ghostly, foggy quality to the image that I like. I'm just going to pounce with the white in a way that, in some ways, paints over the horns, but not, op not in an opaque way, in a much more sheer, transparent kind of way, as if looking through fog. And where it is too heavy, I'm going to rub that away. So some of it is going to be very clear. Oh, and where I just messed up my fade up above, I'm going to have to go back and hit that again. Remember pointing in the direction of the fog. I'm going to kind of buff away at it so that you keep this clean. If I point the brush in the direction of the sky, I'm just going to keep pushing the white up and I'll have this hard line. We don't want that. All right, so now there's only one more step 
There's only one more thing to do and that splatter white across the top of the surface. That takes like two minutes. How do you do it? You take some white paint. If you're right-handed, then you hold the brush you're splattering in the right hand. You need another brush in your left hand. You do step one, dip the brush in water. Step two, in paint. Step three, back in water. Tap, 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 tap. And you just keep doing that for two minutes and then you will have splattered uh, white all over your canvas. That'll look like snow is falling. And that will be that. We'll be back with a finished image. So I just uh, took this painting outside and splattered all over it with just titanium white, uh, a long brush and another brush, tapping it back and forth between white paint and water just to get the right consistency so I get the splatters I like. Longer bristle, bristled brushes will hold more paint and therefore will splatter more. Uh, tiny bristled brushes will hold less paint and therefore only create like a soft dusting. But the more paint, the more the larger the splatters. You can also get variety based on how far you are away from the canvas, whether you're up here or way down here. Um, yeah, so have fun. You cannot, I mean, you can do this technique with so many different animals. Let's say instead of reindeer, you wanted to do an owl or a family of birds on a branch. Or basically, you're only limited by your imagination. If you can find any image, just cut it out trace it or collage it, it's up to you, trace it and then paint inside using the same technique and you'll create this beautiful ombre effect of night sky fades to glistening gold snow with a animal looking at you, the silhouette of it uh, through the fog or through the snow. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope this is inspiring to you. Let me go ahead and sign this painting. Steven Larson, 2014. I'm going to go over it with this silver. And bada bing, bada boom. In just a little while, you finished your uh, Christmas season, holiday, wintery season painting. Thanks. Have a great day.